The reason that I invited Loyal to talk is that they've, he's, the, his organization has been a great supporter of interns, has had lots of interns um, through PCSU working with their um, avian biodiversity project, biocomplexity project, excuse me. Um, they, they have a lot of experience that um, with that, as well as being very supportive of the effort monetarily. Um, I see Nick Shima in the, 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 the room too. You've dealt with a lot of interns and managing those. Um, and I wanted to have a federal side, kind of addressing some of the questions Pauline just brought up is, you know, how do you you, you know, what, what is this of value? What value are interns to a, an agency? And, and as a federal, one of the big research agencies here in the Hawaii, I wanted to have a perspective from you. So. Thank you, Sharon. Can we get a little bit better focus on that, if you don't mind? Sorry, I, and thanks, because all my experience as a person in YCC as an intern had me still a little bit worried about exactly what I was going to do now. But I did want to say that. Uh, um, you know, I've been an intern, I've been a student employed with agencies, uh, YCC, although I hate in, when I was in high school, I'll just say that I've already had my 30-year reunion, so that, <laughs> that was a while back. Uh, we had a discussion, um, before I talk about myself too much, yesterday about how do you measure success in conservation. And in particular, in programs like this, I think it can be very challenging because if I look at myself, I grew up on a national wildlife refuge because my dad was a wildlife refuge manager. So I was maybe either genetically or at least behaviorally, you know, inclined to go out and look at rare plants and birds and, and go out and do those sorts of things. So when there were opportunities to work at a YCC or to go work for an agency or to volunteer with an agency to go off and do neat things like, you know, tag fish, um, you know, I did those. Now, I, I don't know whether those actually changed my experience in life or whether it was just, that was just the, a really great opportunity for me to do something other than to work at a local uh, fast food place, which in our case was Dairy Queen in the little town I grew up. Which by the way, would have been a really good job, but uh, it was much more enjoyable for me to go out and uh, fix trails or um, work with banding rare birds and that sort of stuff. But anyway, that part aside, so I have some experience a lot in, in, my, in my youth uh, right now, I'm the center director for the Pacific Islands Ecosystem Research Center here in Hawaii, which is a USGS facility. And most of our uh, researchers are located on the Big Island. And Nick Shima is in the audience, and he works with us uh, at Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, where our main offices are. So Nick can very politely correct me as we go along. But I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that that we do and where we use people that may come through these programs or really in addition to that, how we um, bring in, we bring in a lot of people to work on our projects. And some of them go through these programs and some of them don't, but they all get experiences and I wanted to relate some of those to you because it's a different kind of experience and way of quote unquote training people for the future and also training the people that we currently have in our research facility. But we, um, work on a number of issues, and they're shown here on the screen, uh, ac across the diversity of um, conservation in, in Hawaii. I wanted to talk just, and just go through these real quickly just to give you an overview of some of the projects and the types of things that, that we bring in a lot of people for. So we work a lot on native birds. That's the bread and butter, if you will, of, of the research center. Doing things from, for example, um, surveying the new Kahuku purchase for Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, looking at native plants and insects. We have a, used a lot of people here in this particular project as well. 
And some of this involves field work, some of it involves computer work, some of it involves uh, talking to people and trying to figure out background information on, on these topics. Plants and insects um, that are maybe sometimes not as, as frequently addressed, particularly the insects. And if you look at this particular conference and how it's changed, there have been a lot of, of talks over the last uh, couple days on invertebrates, which has been really good. They've not been totally forgotten by this group. But we do a lot of work on that. And we work, as I said, you know, talking about uh, predicting ranges and things like that in computer work. For example, looking at Brigamia, uh, Rakii on Molokai, trying to figure out where it could occur, um, issues where it does occur, and maybe that helps figure out how to uh, do restoration projects on that. Invasive species, one of the big, key, important challenges facing conservation in Hawaii. We have a lot of people working on that as well. Again, from the theoretical side of the house, but also from the basics of you know, how do you control these species or prevent them from coming into Hawaii. Um, I want to uh, back up real quick, sorry, uh, and talk a little bit about biocontrol. This is a program that we had a lot of, of emphasis on in the past. Right now it's pretty um, stagnant because we've not hired a, a full-time biocontrol person. But we do have a SCEP person, a SCEP student, so a student working on biocontrol right now. But looking at myconia, looking at distributions, potential distributions, for example, on the Big Island, um, restoration, doing a lot of work on restoration. Some of that is on the Big Island, but a lot of it's on Maui as well. This is one of Art Medeiros' uh, restoration plots on the dry side of Maui. Integrative studies, and these are really interesting, I think, for, for when we bring in students and interns because they're trying to bring together a number of different disciplines to get people integrated uh, with respect to thinking about how to solve problems and to recognize what some of the uh, problems really are. So whether that's looking at watershed work, like our Ridge to Reef program, um, and looking across multiple uh, partner agencies, for example, on Kauai, where we're looking at the uh, Hanalei watershed, trying to figure out how the land and the terrestrial systems are impacting the freshwater stream systems, which are in, ten, in turn impacting the reef systems, trying to integrate that so that when you do a project or do a change somewhere up in the upper reaches of the valley, what are the ramifications of that when you go down to the, to the reefs that are offshore? Again, looking at some of the emerging technologies, for example, the different resolutions and trying to figure out what is the best way to get some of these remotely uh, sensed data to make these decisions for you. The impacts on uh, alien species, for example, and how that's changing some of the uh, landscape dynamics like um, uh, landslides and sedimentation into the reefs. Biocomplexity, avian, alien diseases or bird diseases as we have now learned to call it <coughs> in this conference. Um, it's more than just mosquitoes, you know, biting uh, birds. There's a whole slew of things that, that relate into that, and some of it's at a landscape level. So how do you integrate those, and how do you look at big picture sorts of issues? In addition, taking all that information and accumulating it into monographs. For example, we have an upcoming monograph on forest birds that is going to hopefully look at 40 years worth of data, and I might add probably 40 years worth of students and interns who have contributed to this as well. So to get on to actually talking about students and interns. In particular, most of those projects that I just went through um, have had interns. And there have been fairly uh, significant contributions by uh, interns and students. And they've ranged across all of those types of projects. There's no one type that, that has only had interns. We've had in the past 20 years probably over 1,000 people who are students and interns. Palila Project alone has probably contributed to a large number of those. And Paul Banco, when I gave everybody a kind of a, in my, in Pierce, a quiz, you know, as to how you use students and interns and how many you've had, Paul said he gave up counting at 300. Okay, so there have been a huge number of people that have gone through these projects and made very valuable contributions to those projects. There's obviously been lots of benefits to the people who sit in them, or at least I like to think that they consider themselves more than slave labor, you know, that they, that they got something out of that, that they got to work with really high quality researchers, they got to look at problems, they got to figure out how to solve those problems and be part of a team that addressed those. So they have provided, without any question, you know, 
uh, valuable contribution to all of those projects. And they've gotten out of it, you know, contacts, you know, a little network that they can work with, which is something that all of the programs we've already talked about have done. But I do want to emphasize that this is not just all altruistic or all looking for the future for us. And they provide us, you know, real world, immediate um, benefits to those projects, not only because they're providing a, a person who is going to help us get that project done as a partner, as a as a partner, but they provide, and this may sound strange, they help train the, the research cadre, you know, because, um, so, you know, we have researchers that, like myself, that may come out of university or, and they go into a job and you're managing people. So this is a good way to understand and learn how to manage people as well. So thank you very much. Hakalala <laughs> ma